Hi, this is Daniel Rowe, and I want to show you how we can take your standard 5-minute chart with the volume data applied with both the overnight and the day session showing the wide variance between the volume data and the seasonality in the day volume where you have very high volume after the open and high volume before the close, how we can eliminate those problems with the volume data and turn this 5-minute chart into a chart that looks like this with the TTP relative volume indicator where we've identified several different types of volume spikes and multiple volume and range paint bar conditions, identifying every major turn on this chart and every major area of supply and demand. Now this is going to be a very long presentation, about an hour, and I'm going to cover a lot of information because volume analysis really is about the most intricate and complex analysis that we can do in trading because it's actually the volume data that governs the price data. It's the changing hands of contracts or lots or shares, whatever you're trading, that actually makes the market, which in turn creates the price action. So it's a very complex field and throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you all of the pitfalls with standard volume analysis especially how on a larger intraday chart like you see here with the hourly chart of the ES, you have this wide variance between the overnight session, the European session, and then the US session, which is essentially making your standard analysis of this volume practically useless, okay? But we can eliminate all of that with the relative indicators, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So for the next several minutes throughout this introduction, I'm going to briefly introduce the relative volume, the relative density, and the relative range indicators. I'm going to gloss over some of the different types of signals, and then we're going to come back and get really into detail about what it is these indicators do and why they're so useful and how it can take your trading to just an entirely new level of accuracy and precision like you've never seen before. And near the end, I'll come on and I'll show you my track record since March 1st over the past few months and how I'm combining the relative volume analysis and the relative density analysis together with divergence analysis and market geometry and how I combine all that together for some very seriously accurate trading which is very well illustrated in that track record as you'll see near the end. So pay attention, it's going to get very complex. You may want to take some notes, but by the end of this, you should fully understand what makes these indicators perform as accurately as they do. So here on the 60 minute chart, you can see all of these different paint bar conditions and drawing objects. Let's start with the minor spikes. Those are identified by these little blue X's. Okay, those are minor spikes in relative volume. Now the next slightly stronger signal is the major spikes and those are identified by those magenta up arrows as you can see here and there and over there and then the next is the strongest volume spike or relative volume spike and those are identified by these diamonds as you can see there and here and then the major low down there which was beautifully identified by that extreme spike in relative volume now each of these extreme spikes is also identified by a line of support or a line of resistance. If it's an extreme spike at the low, then we have a support line coming off of that low. If it's an extreme spike at the high, then we have a resistance line coming off of that high. And those lines will act as future support and resistance areas. As you can see here, we had support, finally broke through. We had another area of support come in, which we found some support here. It broke through that, pulled back, and then support becomes resistance. It pulls exactly right back to it and then rolls down for the next move lower. Now the first paint bar condition that we'll discuss is the climax bar. And that is shown here by these deep sky blue bars. And those are usually very high volume, wide ranging bars, which you'll see typically at the end of a move or at the very beginning of a move, signifying an increase in both participation and volatility. Quite often find those at the end of a move. As you can see here, we have climax bars there and a climax bar here. And then finally a big climax bar there to end this down move. Next we have the churn bars, which are in yellow. And those are very high volume per range. They're normally narrow range bars signifying indecision or a lot of limit orders coming in. You'll find these typically at the end of a move or at a period of indecision where a churn bar will kind of knock the market sideways for a little bit. As you can see right here, we had some support come in off of the support area on a churn bar. It knocked it sideways for about seven or eight bars and then finally it came through that area. If you see a churn bar after a climax bar, that's usually a good signal of a strong reversal. And we'll get into some of those different signals later on. Now we also have 
the relative density indicator, which you see here, which is looking at relative volume per range. So we're using this to better identify those churn bars, which are marked in yellow, as you see here, and then the extreme churn bars, which are marked by the magenta bar and paint bar. And we use this in combination with a relative volume to better identify those churn bars. And you'll see more examples of that as we go on. Now the suite also includes the relative range indicator, which is taking the range data, but relativizing it so that we're looking at rather than simply the range of the bar, which is always going to be greater at the open and at the close of the session and lower during the overnight, we're taking the relative range and then we're doing our wide ranging bar analysis, which has been extensively written about and researched by several different people. But here, we're able to do that wide ranging bar analysis, as you see in blue, to a much more precise and accurate level. And even taking it one step further and looking at extremely wide ranging bars, which you can see marked here in the cyan, and then even narrow range bars, which we see marked by the white paint bars, which we can then use to find different breakout type conditions. So those are the three indicators that are included with this suite. So when we start talking about volume analysis and how important and complex it is, I think everyone who's ever tried to learn anything at all about volume analysis really understands how complex it can be, especially when you're talking about intraday charts. But when we talk about daily charts, we all know that volume analysis is important, all right? We can see here at this low, we have a spike in volume, which just about ends that move lower. It does come down a little bit further. Here we have another major spike, which does end that move on that day and then we get the major reversal out of that low. So we see these large swings coinciding with these spikes in volume, as we can see another one right here. But when it comes to the intraday charts, we typically find this a lot more difficult analysis to perform, even though we see it so clearly on the daily charts. When we get to a chart like this, like a 30 minute chart where we're looking at, well, we've got these huge spikes at the beginning of every single session. So when we're going from one session to the next, how do we truly tell whether that's a true volume spike, or is that just a standard bar for the first bar of the day? Okay, it, it becomes very convoluted and essentially impossible to do accurate volume analysis on these larger intraday charts from one bar to the next or from one session to the next. When we look down one step further at say a five minute chart, we begin to see the actual seasonality to the volume where we have very high volume in the morning, high volume in the afternoon before the close, and then this kind of a lull making this saucer shaped pattern for the intraday volume during the midday. So we have the high volume in the morning, high volume near the close, and on average, we have this kind of low volume during the lunch period. So midday is lower, beginning and the end is always higher. That's that seasonality to volume. We can see from the close to about two in the morning or so, we have extremely low volume in the overnight. But then once Europe opens, we have this uptick in volume, which continues on until the US open, where we have this huge increase in volume. So if we were to try to put Bollinger Bands on this, standard deviation bands, or some kind of moving average envelopes and things like that to try to find and do this volume spike analysis, well, we'd essentially be having these huge spikes come in right at the open and right at the close for every single bar at the open or every single bar leading up to the close, because we always have spikes in volume at the open and spikes in volume at the close. So we would be getting these false signals at the open of every day, alerting us to these spikes in volume that really aren't spikes at all. They're the typical amount of volume that trades per that time of day. And then we would miss the spikes that would occur during the midday because none of these bars are actually breaking above the third standard deviation band or even the second, okay? So after the close, during the initial overnight, this data is completely skewed such that we can't even use it for volume spike analysis. We would first have to eliminate this variance between the sessions and also eliminate that seasonality during the session. We could eliminate altogether the overnight market and just use the RTH chart, which are the regular trading hours, essentially the pit traded session from 8.30 to 3.15 every day central time. And of course that does help us with the variance between the sessions because we've eliminated altogether the overnight session, but it doesn't help us with the seasonality problem with the high volume in the morning high volume in the afternoon and the lower volume during the midday session that we see typically over and over again. Now when we add volume per range in an attempt to smooth it further to try to eliminate some of that seasonality, which you can see I've done in the subplot below volume in the orange, 
we're still left with the problem of seasonality, yet we have gained some new information with the volume per range, especially when we're trying to determine uh, how many contracts are necessary to move the market every tick further, uh, and that will be useful information for us, which you'll see it's that information that we're using in the actual paint bar signals, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but we are still left with a problem of seasonality in that we have very high volume per range at the open, just after the open, and then leading into the close, and then very low volume per range during the midday. Okay, there is some variance in between, but typically on average, as you can see, just from one week's worth of data, you have spikes in the morning after the open and then spikes leading up into the close. And when we try to run our standard deviation bands and moving average envelopes and things like that on that data to try to find those spikes systematically, we're unable to do that because of the seasonality effect. So that's what we have to focus on eliminating in a correct manner so that we can now do advanced volume analysis properly. So we have now an idea of what some of the different problems are with the typical style of volume analysis. But before we move on to show why the relative indicators are such important tools and really just an incredible advancement in volume and range analysis, let's first consider why we need to even be worried about doing volume analysis at all. Well, first of all, it's supply and demand that actually governs the movements of markets. And it's imbalances in supply and demand that lead to retracements, even full-blown reversals, and of course continuation patterns or the end of those retracements. If we can learn to identify these imbalances in real time, then we can very easily take advantage of some very low risk, high reward setups, all right? And once we begin to thoroughly understand how we can use volume analysis to take advantage of these patterns we see developing in real time, our trading results will just get better and better and better and I have the results to prove that to you, which I'll show you near the end. But as we've seen, doing proper volume analysis really is pretty difficult and convoluted. So let's just recap some of the main issues that we're facing here. When it comes to doing volume analysis, uh, the typical kind of way that we see people try to apply volume and range analysis. First of all, we have the high variance between the overnight volume and the day session, which you've seen very clearly illustrated as I've been showing you the difference and the volume from one session to the next. Of course, here in this chart in the background, we've eliminated the overnight session, but we're still left with the seasonality during that day session where we have the higher volume in the morning, the lower volume before and leading up into the close. Okay, so there's that main problem that we have to deal with in order to do proper volume spike analysis and volume and range analysis. All right, but even further, and this is where it gets convoluted, if we want to understand how we can use volume analysis and range analysis to, to better help our trading, then we have to understand the interrelationships between volume and range and volatility. And of course, all of that has to be understood in the larger context of previous market movements and where we're actually at in the trend or the developing range uh, that may or may not be developing. So we have to take everything that we're learning about volume and range analysis and apply that to the overall larger context of the market movements, which is why it's so pivotal and so key to really understand the movement of markets so that you can begin to make some profits in this. You have to get away from relying solely on automated systems and you actually have to learn how and why the markets move the way that they do so that you can capitalize on that and begin to make some high probability, low risk, high reward potential trades that will begin to grow your account consistently over time. So now that we've given that extremely long introduction, which really was necessary so that you understand what the relative indicators are actually doing for you, so that you know what you're investing in and you can actually see why these indicators are so important compared to you know all the other indicators. This stuff is really providing you with good information that you need to determine where the markets are likely to reverse and retrace and continue from. All right, so now we're actually going to discuss how the relative volume deals with all of these problems, helping you make sense out of the volume data so that you can make informed trading decisions using the volume and the volume and range information. So here we have that same regular trading hours chart, the pit session only of the ES with both volume and volume per range with the standard deviation bands applied. And now here we have the same chart, but with a TTP relative volume indicator applied. Can you see the difference in the output? We have eliminated the seasonality problem and we have actually combined the volume per range into the paint bar conditions 
of the relative volume. Before I explain the details of how we do all of this, let's look at another five minute chart of the ES, but including the overnight session, so you can really see how the seasonality problem is totally eliminated. So here is the before and the after. We're going to zoom in on these two sessions right here, so the 8th and the 9th. And here is the after, starting with June 8th and ending with June 9th, where we have the relative volume on the top, and then the volume, and then the volume per range. But let's take it down one step further. Let's focus in now on this June 8th day only so that I can now begin to get into the details of the relative volume indicator, how we're actually calculating it so that you can understand exactly how useful this thing actually is. So here we are. We have the relative volume on top, then the volume, then the volume per range. What we're going to do is we're going to focus in on this 4 a.m. bar. I think it's the 405 bar, which coincides with this major spike at high, which is that magenta down arrow, and the climax bar, which is in deep sky blue. So this is the first big down bar after coming back up to the resistance line again, marked by that green horizontal line, which is coming off from a previous extreme spike at high. So if we look closely here, we cannot tell at all anything about this bar's volume or its volume per range. But with a relative volume, we can tell right away that this is higher volume than normally trades for this time of the day, simply because it's above that 100% indigo horizontal line. That indigo horizontal line is set to 100, and we can tell that this bar must be up around 150%. Now pay attention here, that means that the volume that traded during this five minute bar is about 50% greater than the average volume that traded during this time period over the past 10 days. Did you catch that? Instead of comparing this bar's volume to the previous bar's volume, we are comparing it to the average volume for that bar's exact time period. All right, it's in this way that we can compare the volume at the open with the average volume at the open rather than the bars right before the open, which we know doesn't make any sense at all to do anyhow because of the seasonality problem and the variance between the sessions. And once we have performed these calculations, then we can come back and compare these relative volume bars to each other and moving average envelopes and standard deviation bands, et cetera, and the ranges of the bars to find different size spikes and climax and churn bars, among other signals. And these are those different plots that we use, which you can see are really a mess when you try to show them all at the same time, which is why I've hidden them by default. But we're using all these different plots to find the different spike conditions. Okay, and that's only possible because of the relative volume output, which eliminates that variance between the sessions and the seasonality. So that's why this is so important and that's why it's so incredibly accurate. So even if you're using something similar to the better volume indicator, you still have the problem of the huge variance between the overnight and the volume at the open and then the low volume during the midday and the high volume near the close again. So you're always going to have these signals in any volume indicator that are false at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, and you're invariably going to miss some of the major signals throughout the day because of uh, the seasonality and the volume. Here you can see you had a, a minor spike at the high, which was the end of this move. You don't get anything at all out of the better volume indicator. You have another spike, minor spike at the high here, nothing from the better volume. Here you have a weak climax bar, which is the very first bar beginning this huge down move. And again, you have nothing in the better volume indicator. One more time, we have a weak churn bar in the relative volume here, but nothing in the better volume. So you see this day after day from one session to the next, because with the relative volume, we have eliminated those major issues with standard volume analysis. And that's what makes it so important and so accurate. Now, just to make this abundantly clear how useless standard volume analysis is, especially on even larger intraday charts. Let's look at the 60 minute ES chart comparing relative volume to the better volume. And really this is true with any other standard volume analysis indicator. You're always going to have these extreme signals at the start of every session because of all the problems that I've talked about up to this point where you have the wide variance between sessions and then the seasonality to the actual day session itself, high volume in the morning, high volume in the afternoon, lower volume during the day. So you can see at the start of every session, you have these massive bars, which are giving you climax bars here in the, in the better volume, climax churn bar here, climax bar, climax bar, climax churn bar, climax bar. You're getting those signals at the start 
in the end of every single session. And well over 80% of the time, those are not really true signals in line with the relative volume because typically this is a normal sized open for the first bar of the session. Here, it looks like a spike, but that's really typically low for the average bar of the session, of the first bar of the session. Okay, so we have to look at this comparatively. We cannot look at larger intraday charts with standard volume analysis and expect to get anything accurate out of that information. We have to look at it through the lens of the relative volume if we're actually going to make accurate sense and be precise with the volume data and be able to get signals like you see on this chart. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. Before moving on, however, I will say one thing about these different signals in the better volume indicator. The conditions for climax bars and the churn bars are something that I've carried over into the relative volume indicator because those are good conditions. But like everything that I've been saying over and over leading up to this point, the problem with using those conditions, and they are quite logical and they make a lot of sense, the problem with using those on the standard volume indicator, especially for intraday charts and larger intraday charts, is they're not giving you accurate information due to the variance between sessions and the intraday seasonality. But once we take those volume per range and volume times the range conditions for the climax bar, the climax churn, the churn, the weak signals, once we apply those to the actual relative volume, then they give us very useful information. And then on top of that, we're doing the advanced volume spike analysis so that we have an even larger number of signals and we can tell whether those signals are at a low or at a high, whereas with the standard best better volume conditions, we have no idea whether those are forming at the high or the low in case you wanted to use that in the market analyzer or in strategy development and bloodhound or what have you. Now that we've really made that clear, let's look at a five minute chart and we'll go through each of these signals that we can see on this one five minute chart, not incorporating any multiple time frame analysis, just looking at this one chart. So we're going to start with this signal on the far left where we have an extreme spike at the low marked by that yellow diamond and a climax churn bar with 358%. Now a climax churn bar is both a climax and a churn, so we normally see those at turning points. Now they don't have to be necessarily strong reversals, but we do usually see those just before a retracement or a complete reversal. And you can see that's what we see here. Now the low of that bar is also being marked by the support line, which we see coming off of every bar that has a diamond or an extreme spike at the low, we'll see the low of that bar marked by the support line and the high of a bar with an extreme spike marked with a green resistance line. And we can see the market does actually come back and use this as support. Now the next signal is both a major spike at the high marked by that magenta down triangle but it's also a churn bar and it's up around 288%. So that's 188% more than the average volume that trades during that time of day. So very indicative of a swing high, which in fact it is. It turns down for the next two bars and then goes right up into this previous resistance line from an extreme spike at the high, which we can't see on the chart. Now the next signal is both a minor spike at the low and a weak climax bar into this low finding support on that previous area of support marked by the extreme spike at low bar. Okay, then the next bar after that is a weak churn bar up around 115%. So well above average with a weak climax minor spike into that low followed by a weak churn bar, that's strong evidence of a pivot low, a swing low. And then it turns up, comes back, finds support on that line again, then turns up and we get another major spike at that high, marked by that magenta down triangle, which is also, again, another climax bar, up around 148%. Now this is the bar where we have the climax down, which is really not a climax, but in this case is the beginning of a new move down. That is the beginning of this entire major move down. We have a wide ranging reversal bar, which is closing near the low, 150% relative volume, which satisfy the climax bar conditions, and it's reversing off of that area of resistance from the previous extreme spike at the high back here that we can't see. Okay, so that's kicking off the next down move. Then here, once we break below these lows, just barely, we have a climax churn bar up around 170%, which is also an extreme spike at the low. And now that low will be marked with the new support line. Okay, then we're immediately followed thereafter by another climax churn bar and an extreme spike at the high, which will now act as 
the new area of resistance. We kind of go sideways a little bit, break above that high here, and then start rolling down. Now once we come and break down through this area of support, we come back into that previous support, which is now acting as resistance, and we get a weak churn bar. So that previous support becomes resistance. We get the weak churn bar, which we saw we did not get on the standard better volume. We're not getting any of these signals from the standard better volume, uh, but with the relative volume with the advanced volume spike analysis and the better volume conditions built in, we're now getting this weak churn bar, which is closing off of its high near its low from the previous area of support, which is now resistance. And that starts the next big move down. Okay, and it's actually, once we get down to the bottom of this trend channel, which you'll see, it's the market geometry and the divergence analysis that I combine together with the relative volume analysis that enables me to take these high probability, low risk, high reward trades, uh, which you see trade after trade after trade in uh, some of the training videos that I create. Okay, so the target for this is the bottom of the channel, which is why we wouldn't exit right here when we have an extreme spike right in the middle of nowhere. We're waiting for the target and that target is down here when we get the extreme spike at the low together with the climax bar to end this move. Next bar is a doji which actually comes down to the bottom of the channel closing up off the lows near the high and then it turns right back up. And where does it come up to? But where you can see the previous supply came in which was also a previous area of support, support, then supply. We come down, then we come back up. We break this high just barely close off of the highs on a minor spike at the high and then roll back down. So that's how accurate this relative volume indicator actually is. It's quite incredible really. I, I would not ever trade without it. It's the backbone of my entire trading methodology. Now when we get into the relative density, I'm using this, as I said during the introduction, I'm using this to more precisely identify some of those churn and extreme churn bars by relativizing the volume per range. So we're taking the time period of each bar and we're comparing the volume per range of that bar of that time period with the average volume per range for that time period to give us the relative density output, okay? And when we get the spikes in the relative density, those are acting as our churn bars, and then the extreme spikes are acting as the extreme churn bars. So now when we combine the relative density with the relative volume, we can see here at this last up bar, we didn't have any signal at all out of the relative volume, but in the relative density, that was a churn bar, you see? And again here, we have an extreme churn bar, which in the relative volume is between an extreme churn and a climax. Okay, so we have back-to-back -back extreme churn bars in this area, in which we can also see the extreme churn on this climax bar, which is giving us some indication of a large amount of support coming in and holding this market back up. It's not until this previous high was taken out right in here that we begin to roll over. And here at this bar, we're getting a, a climax signal, but instead, since it's near a low, we're not actually getting a selling climax, but instead what it is, is it's the start of a new up move. It just so happens that this is right before the open, and then at the open, we all know that everything can change at the open. It comes straight down and straight back up, but this is typically what you'll see at the beginning of a new change in trend. We have a climax bar, which is at the beginning of a new move, and that climax bar is also a churn bar in the relative density. I know this is getting a little bit complex, but as you begin to learn this, it will all become second nature to you as you begin to do this advanced volume analysis and you can start to predict what the market is going to do from one bar to the next just by knowing this information. So again, we see that's a churn bar where in the relative volume, it's actually a climax bar. And here we have another churn bar with a true selling climax. So this is a, a down move and then a rush down into this low with a true selling climax, which is also a churn bar. So we know that yes, that is a selling climax, but down near this low, support obviously started coming in because now when we divide that relative volume by the range and then take the relative volume per range and see whether or not we have a churn bar, we indeed do have a churn bar. So we know that it's taking more volume to move that market every tick further down than has previously been necessary to move the market down every tick up until this point. So in other words, we know that some limit orders are coming in and sitting there or even market orders buying, but they're, they're coming in and they're supporting that market there. We know that because we have a climax bar down into this low, which is also a churn bar, okay? 
Okay, so we know that support is starting to come in right there. The next bar closes up off the lows, which is also a doji, and then it starts to move higher. Now here, what I like to do is I like to change the color of the relative density, make the bars a lot fatter, eliminate the color for the decreasing and the increasing relative volume, and then I like to combine the two onto the same panel so that I can look at both the relative volume and the relative density at the same time without having to move my eyes to both panels. So it saves me time and it helps me do more thorough analysis from one bar to the next as I am combining the relative volume and the relative density. See, we couldn't do that with the standard volume output and the standard volume per range because the volume per range is going to change from one time frame to the next and from one instrument to the next. So we could never put those on the same panel. But here, with the relative volume and the relative density, we can do that. So let's look at just a couple of examples of how we can combine these two for a fuller picture, for that added information that we're missing with only the relative volume. So together we get a complete look inside of these bars. Here where we have a big down bar, which is actually increased relative volume, you can see that green bar, but the density is much, much less. Previous bar is a low density bar, where we have decreasing density, and then the actual bar that's being marked is even lower density, down at around, looks like about 60%. So very low density. What that's telling me is there's not a lot of interest coming back down. So we're selling this. We have a big, wide-ranging bar back down into this previous low, but there's really no interest involved when we're looking at the density of that bar, the amount of volume per range so essentially the number of contracts necessary to move that market every tick further is much lower than has previously been necessary to move the market every tick. Okay, so we know there's very little interest in the downside. That's essentially a no supply bar if you're looking at uh, kind of Wyckoff type analysis. We have very little supply on that bar. It's immediately met with a lot of buying pressure that turns right back up into this weak climax bar at this high. This bar is actually marked by two churn bars back to back, but you see the relative volume output, if you can see it, barely. We have a yellow bar here, which is a churn bar, and then the next bar is a yellow bar, churn bar, which is decreasing relative volume, but it's actually increasing relative density. That's an extreme churn bar in the relative density, and I have a very strong idea that that is going to be the low there, where we have a selling climax down, followed by a churn bar, then another churn bar with an even tighter range, which is also a doji, right at this previous area of support that we put in back here, which we found support here and here and then now here, which is probably a 50% retracement of this move up. Okay, and then it turns up strong after that. So they're building a little bit of a base right here, and then it turns up and they work the orders up higher, moving above these previous highs. Now the relative range, as I alluded to briefly at the beginning, is enabling us to do this wide-ranging bar analysis, but more accurately, eliminating that variance between the sessions and the seasonality of each individual session. Again, we can see the wide-ranging bars are in blue, so we can see one here at the high, and then one here to start this move down, and then we have the extremely wide-ranging bars, which we have ending this down move right here, and then starting this down move in the overnight. Now that doesn't look like an extremely wide-ranging bar, but for that time of day, which is just before midnight, it's at 11 a.m. Central Time, that is an extremely wide-ranging bar for that time of day. And that kicks off the big down move. We know that something's going on out of the ordinary because we have a much larger range for that bar than we normally have at that time of day. And then it comes on down. And now at this little hiccup here where it goes sideways for the next 12 to 15 hours, we have an extremely wide ranging bar down into that low. And then finally another extremely wide ranging bar to finish this low, which we saw was a climax in the relative volume and an extreme spike in relative volume and also a churn bar in the relative density to end this down move. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is run you through a brief demo starting with the top down. We're going to start with a 360 minute chart. I'm going to show you how I combine the market geometry, the divergence analysis together with 
the relative volume and the relative density to find these important turning points in the market. One method is just as important as the other. The relative volume, however, is the actual confirming factor to confirm the areas that I'm trading off of. I have the volume on here just to show you the utter uselessness of it on such a large intraday chart. Let's just go ahead and get rid of it because it really is pointless. You can see many of the major reversals are being found by the relative volume signals. The spikes in the relative volume, the extreme churn bar in the relative density, and the multiple volume and range signals with the paint bar conditions. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with drawing the market geometry on this 360 minute chart. We start from the high, then go to this high, and it finds this low automatically because that's the widest perpendicular point from this blue line. You can see here, this is a live chart of the ES. Just this morning, we came down and we tagged that line right there. Okay, so we found strong support coming in right here. When we go down to the 30 minute chart, you'll see even more clearly why this was such a strong area of support as we confirm this auto trend line using that 30 minute chart. So let's look at that now. Here we are. Again, I have the volume on here to show you how useless it is. Let's just take that off. Okay, briefly, I do have some other indicators on here. Weekly pivots and a weekly VWAP, volume weighted average price. In the members area, I show you where you can get access to these other indicators. Surprisingly enough, if another vendor does sell some tools that I find very useful, I let you guys know about that so that you can buy them if you like to as well. And these are some of those tools. These are really a, a couple of tools that I wouldn't trade without the VWAP package and uh, the weekly and daily pivot points. Okay, I'm not going to get into the details of all of that, but you can see at this low, this major low right here, this is the low that came down and tagged that automated trend channel line on the 360 minute chart. It's a weak climax bar. It's up around 200% relative volume. It's a major spike as you can see by that magenta up triangle. We have bullish divergence and the divergence is pro. This is the TTP divergence is pro indicator which comes with a suite of indicators so that you can measure divergence with any oscillator, any indicator you wish. You can see we've broken below the prior week's low. This is also S1 in the weekly pivots and then the prior week's second standard deviation VWAP. I go into the details of what all of that means in the members area, but for now, suffice it to say, we are extremely oversold on the weekly VWAP. We've broken below several major swing lows. This is exactly one of those fake out breakout areas where we're breaking out, but we're breaking out into such a strong area of support with the market geometry, which we found with that 360 minute chart using the automated trend channels from the floating toolbar pro. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you the market geometry on the 30 minute chart, but because there's so much on this chart, it's a little bit confusing. Let's go down to a blank 30 minute chart of the ES and I'll draw the market geometry. So we draw from major swing to major swing to find the next major swing or major pivot so we go from low to low and you see it automatically finds this high up here because that is the widest perpendicular point from the baseline, which I've drawn from the swing here to the swing here. So it's drawing to that high rather than this major high because that's the widest point and that's actually the perfect point to use because look, we find the exact high there at the upper median line and the exact low here at the lower median line. So now we've found two major areas one on the 360 minute and now one on the 30 minute. So let's go back to that 30 minute. Here you see the weak climax into this low, breaking the previous low, previous week's low, down below the third standard deviation of the weekly VWAP. And then the next bar is a big reversal bar back up. And that's what we wanna see. We wanna see that low get confirmed. And then we want to try to buy the first higher low to take advantage of that next big push to new highs. Okay, so we wanna fine tune this higher low on a five minute chart. Let's do that now. So here we have the five minute chart. You see this is that first push back up on the 30 minute. And then here we have the retracement back down. So when we get this retracement back down, we'd like to see you know over a 50% retracement so that we can minimize that risk a bit, get a tight stop, and then try to get a big move out of this up to the top of the trend channel, which I'll show you in a moment. But just to briefly go over this, you can see we are about half a tick away from that 78.6 retracement line, which is just a beautiful, perfect retracement. To end this up move, we had a strong churn bar, which was also a minor spike in the relative volume, followed by a weak climax, closing off of the highs with another minor spike, which is also volume divergence, which is a pattern you'll learn in the members area when you invest in the entire package 
of indicators. I show you a lot about this pattern, which is a typical reversal pattern. Okay, when we come down and we make this first low on the five minute chart at S1, which is the floor trader pivot support line, support number one, we close up off of the lows on what? On a strong churn bar in the relative density, which signified by that spring green density bar behind the relative volume bar, which you can see there in that really light green. So closing up off the lows, we get the initial push back up. You might be tempted to buy right there. You could with a stop behind the 78.6, but then it comes back down to test this low on a minor spike in relative volume. Okay. After we turn back up after that, after we have this narrow range bar to follow this minor spike down, we get that reversal bar. That would be where I would enter. I would fine tune that of course on the two minute chart. And then you can see we actually come back and test that area again on decreasing density, decreasing relative volume. It's down around 70, 75% in the density, about 60% in the relative volume. So we come down and we test that area again, except this time on a no supply bar. So we have no supply coming in to try to sell below this low. And then we turn back up on what? Increasing relative volume, increasing density, good looking reversal bar, the same size as that last bar down, and we start moving higher. That would be the second entry if you miss the first one here. Okay, but let's fine tune all of that on the two minute chart now. Before we move to that two minute chart though, let's load the trend channel lines. So we go from low to low to find the next high. You can see the median line and the upper auto line come together right here. Well, they really come together about right there, which is also where the ABCD line meets the auto line right there. So that would be your first target for this trade. Your stop would be right here. You would have a four tick stop and you would be shooting for the top of this trend channel for the first target. Now, of course, on that 30 minute chart, that's looking like a very strong reversal, uh, very major low. So you would want to hold a second contract if you were trading two contracts for a much larger move up and out of this trend channel, which we can see we do actually get right to the top of the median line. So we found support on the lower median line here, and then finally came up and nailed that median line. That would be your second exit right there. Okay, and then of course you could re-enter on this nice pullback, and then we come back up on divergence, and that would be your exit right there for this trade, which we're just seeing now. So we'll probably come down a little bit and then go off to new highs at some point today. Okay, so this is the two minute chart. This is that area that we were looking at getting long from. So we'll draw the retracements again here. We can see that 78.6 retracement. Let's just delete those other fib lines. This is a really neat tool. You can just click on any fib line and delete it automatically without having to open it up. Okay, so we've got the 78.6 retracement. As we're coming down into this low, we have an extreme churn bar followed by a weak climax. Turns back up, it gives us that initial push up that we're looking for before we try to take any kind of reversal trade. And then it comes back to test that low and it tests that low on a minor spike in relative volume, a churn bar, but an extreme churn bar in the relative density on bullish divergence from the 78.6 fib. So that's the perfect high or low right there. Okay, that would be where I would enter. I would have my stop just a couple of ticks below that 78.6. And then here we see the end of this move on a minor spike. We also saw one here, knocked it sideways for a little bit. Also a weak climax bar. And then we start coming down to test this low again. And finally that last bar coming down, that little doji right there, is a churn bar in the relative density. And so you wouldn't see that churn bar if you didn't have the relative density because the relative volume is not showing the full churn there. It's just showing a minor spike at the low, which you can see marked by that little blue X. Okay, so if you missed this entry, then your next entry is right here, starting with that weak climax bar to start the next move up, which is actually followed by a strong climax bar which is also a minor spike. So we're getting a lot of buying pressure in here now, starting this next move. And then when we draw our market geometry, we have our target up at the top of the channel and the median line. Of course, this would be your first exit right there. If you felt a little uncomfortable after the pullback and it goes back up, you could definitely exit there uh, for the first target. Now your next possible exit would definitely be right here because of the volume divergence pattern. If you weren't trying to hold for a much larger move, you would want to get out here. You've got the volume divergence. 
extreme climax bar into that high, breaking out of the trend channel, but on bearish divergence. And then that last churn bar is also an extreme churn bar in the relative density. I know this is a lot to handle, a lot to learn, but this is true analysis. This is really what trading is all about, is trying to find those areas where you can limit your risk down as low as possible and expect a large move out of your entry to maximize your reward to risk. And that's really what it's all about. If you can do that consistently, then you should easily be able to make money trading. Right, then we have the pullback, it hits the lower median line, and then it breaks up following that lower median line all the way up. It finally breaks up to new highs, and where does it go? But to the upper median line, which we've defined by the initial major low, first higher low, and then the widest perpendicular point between those two lows. Okay, so that's just one brief example of how we tie all of this together with the market geometry, the divergence, and then of course the relative volume and the relative density is the backbone of this entire system. So here's just a little update on what's happened since this high was put in. Remember we said it will probably pull back and then continue higher for the rest of the day and it's done that, but now we've had the extreme spike in relative volume on the five minute, which is also a strong churn bar in the density. We've got bearish divergence, which is not yet confirmed, as you can see by the dashed trend line, but we do have bearish divergence and a climax churn bar. So that is a very good bar to end this up move. And especially when we look now at the 120 minute chart, I wanted to keep this kind of simple or at least as simple as possible. Uh, but let's go ahead and have a look at this 120 minute chart. So connecting from the low here to the low here, let me just draw that again from low to low draws automatically from that high, we broke through that high, and then we have the shadow line from that automated trend channel line, and we've come back and we've hit that now. And that is also nearly a 61.8 retracement. So that is a very good target for the exit here. As you can see again on the five minute, what a great exit that would be. Let's update our trend channel lines. You can see we went right up to the top of the upper median line, we followed this channel around and then finally the climax churn bar right back into the median line on bearish divergence and now we're starting to roll over and you can see that even better on the two minute with an extremely high climax churn bar right into that buying climax. So before I wrap this up I want to take just a couple of moments and show you the track record that I've been building. Now this is in SIM, but I've been doing this for a particular reason because I've been developing all of these methods over the past eight years and I've finally gotten everything programmed the way that I want it. So naturally the first step is to begin proving this in SIM and that's what I've been doing since March 1st, building a track record of over 300 trades for over three months. And then once I've proven that, then take it live. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to trade as much as I would have liked to over the past few weeks since I've been finalizing the software, the website, and getting ready for a presentation. But you can see, only with a SIM account from March 1st, I've generated a profit factor of 6.22. For those of you that don't know, that is incredible. It's truly incredible. So 51,000 since March 1st with over 323 trades. Now some of these are not fully independent trades because I have taken between one and three contract trades, never more than three contracts, mostly between one and two, uh, but my percent profitability is 68% and the average trade size is 16 ticks in crude oil. Most of these trades have been in crude oil. That's my uh, favorite market to trade. Now I did have one day where I messed up big time and I had a huge drawdown of $1,600. Uh, that's the largest drawdown. I immediately recovered that day though. I took a number of losers back to back and um, I had Ninja crash while I was in a trade and then once I got everything back up, it had completely blown through my stops and that's just a problem with sim trading because your orders are not sitting on the exchange. But at any rate, I've proven this out 100% even with the minor hiccup here and you can see, of course, I recovered in the same day, so it doesn't show that I actually lost money. But you can see with the daily net profit that I did have a few losing trades. Now, these were swing trading days here and here and here. This was actually day trading. For the first month or so, I was day trading about five to six hours a day. And then uh, starting 
in April, I was only trading the first two hours in the morning. Okay, and this happened to be a very huge swing trade in crude oil with two contracts. Okay, so only four losing days. A couple of uh, nearly break even days where I started out losing in the morning and then worked to try to make it back to break even or slightly positive where we have one, two, three, four maybe one of those is one of those days we'll say about seven days out of one, two, three, about 40 actual trading days so pretty good odds there at any rate a win-loss ratio like that 2.9 with an expectancy of 16 ticks uh, that is pretty incredible I understand this is sim but if you can't treat fake money like real money then you'll never have a chance in this business anyhow and this is the process that you need to go through to prove out what you're working and like I've already said this is exactly what I've been doing so now the next step is to take this live uh, which I will be doing as I go into opening up a live trade room which will actually be trading live in uh, sometime hopefully in August I'm shooting for August maybe the first part of September okay so I'll keep you posted on that if you're on the mailing list but now that you've seen the track record let's start to wrap this video up and I'll go into what all you get with this package Okay, so what all do we get with the Relative Indicator Suite? Well, of course, you get the Relative Volume, which we've gone into great detail about, and the Relative Density Indicator, which is looking at the volume per range, relative volume per range, and then, of course, the actual relative range itself, which we're using to identify the wide-ranging bars, the extremely wide-ranging bars, and the narrow-range bars. Okay, you also get several workspaces for day or swing trading. This is the workspace for the 6E. And of course, these workspaces will load all of these indicators only if you have them. So if you want to have the exact workspace that I use, of course, you would have to own the entire package of indicators, including the other volume and range indicators for tick, range, and minute charts, which is looking at true volume. The divergence is pro suite. And then the other indicators, which I show you where to get in the members area, uh, which is actually from another vendor whose products I use because they're actually excellent products. Uh, so I show you where you can get those and I actually show you how to use them together with my tools. So this is the day trading workspace for the 6E. This is the workspace for Apple or for any other stock. It just depends on what size tick chart you want to use per the stock you're looking at. This would be the workspace for crude oil. This is a black workspace. If you don't like the gray, of course, we can change it to black. For bars, if you don't like candlesticks, we can adapt the colors to, to whatever look you want them to have. Uh, this is the day trading workspace for the ES. This is kind of a simplified version of a day trading workspace with only four charts. I would recommend using this one at first to get the hang of doing multiple time frame analysis because it can be quite difficult uh, as you're first getting started in this. But once you get used to it, then you can add more of the larger charts to find some of those larger areas to trade from. This is the FDAX day trading workspace, gold, silver. This is a black workspace for gold, gray for gold. This is the TF. And then all of these come with, I believe, something like 26 different chart templates so that you can immediately rebuild a workspace if you need to or just load any size chart with the appropriate settings for the relative indicators and the divergence indicators, etc. Of course, it comes with a members area with multiple training videos and instructions on how to use the indicators. And for those of you who actually own Bloodhound, I do include a Bloodhound template with training videos going over the multiple different solvers that I've built for the relative indicators so that you can access all of the data that they give you very quickly in Bloodhound and of course build your own trading systems or alert systems or, or what have you with the relative volume, the relative density, and the relative range. Okay, so that's a wrap for this presentation. By now you should understand exactly what all you get with this suite of indicators and just how important these indicators actually are. If you want to incorporate volume analysis in your trading, and really you should because it's volume that governs the movement of prices then you really need these indicators because looking at volume any other way as you've seen very clearly throughout this presentation is virtually useless so if you want to do intraday volume analysis this is where it's at it's taken my own personal trading to just a completely new level of accuracy and precision and it's enabled me day after day fine-tune my entries get my risk incredibly low and be able to hold 
for those larger moves, increasing my reward to risk sometimes upwards of 10 to 1, as you can see in the, uh, in the track record. So an excellent set of indicators. Do yourself a favor. Invest in your trading. Invest in your education. Get a good set of volume indicators and thoroughly learn volume analysis. So go ahead and click on the button below. Get started today and begin learning how to incorporate this incredibly advanced and accurate volume analysis in your trading. And you'll be very happy that you did.